Were you a comic book reader? Did you? You really know, read comic books? I was a comic book buyer. I was a very slow reader. I would read a comic book, then I'd get to those pages where it was like half a page of words, and I was like, "This is why I don't read. This is why I don't read regular books because I don't want to read this much. You know, I want to see the pictures, a couple words, and like move on to the next page. You know what I mean? So, co- coloring books were were great literature for you. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes, Troy. This is perfect. Look, no whites, just pictures. Mom, more of these. <laughs> Sylvester and Tweety next time. In a world of bad movies, two follically challenged men will stop at nothing to share their opinions of them. Their wives are tired of listening. But are you? This isn't the podcast you deserve. But it's the one you need. Welcome to Bald Guys and Bad Movies. Welcome to the first episode of Bald Guys and Bad Movies. Uh, we're happy to have you guys here. Uh, I'm Mike Stella. I'm joined today with uh, Troy Luter, my co-host. Say hi, Troy. Hey, 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 hey. Basically, what we're here to do is we're just we're just here to chat about movies. We're a couple of movie buffs. We we love movies, and uh, we get into these conversations all the time. And we thought we'd share them share them with you, share them with the world. Was is that about accurate? You think, Troy? I think so because uh, the people we know are, are are really really tired of hearing us talk about film. I think for us, I, I think the the best analogy is. If you know a really diehard sports fan, that's how we talk about movies. Oh, absolutely. My wife is tired of hearing about the lighting and this movie looks so good. And I was just like, it just looked so great. She's like, I don't give a shit. She's like, I, you know, it's whether or not she liked the movie, right? Which we talk about too. But I mean, ultimately, we, 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 we definitely look at things from a little bit more wider perspective than your average moviegoer. But hey, we... I think we, we get into it. We have a good time talking about films. And, and, uh, yeah. and is, that, is that a curse, though? Like, no. Uh, no way. No way. I'll tell you what is a curse. If you're ever on a movie set and you watch something being filmed, it's it's nearly impossible to, like, when you see the movie, like, actually disconnect yourself and, like, watch it as a film. Like, that's one thing. That's one thing I've noticed. Like, scenes that I have been present while shot when i see those in a movie theater i'm like man i just all i can do is see the the set you know what i mean i can't see it as an actual scene it's it's weird that's that's a great segue uh just to tee it up for a, a tease for a later episode but mike has a pretty incredible connection to some of the greatest films ever made. It's through nepotism, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's still really fucking cool. So one day we'll get into that. I mean, how, how much can we say about giving it away? Like, w- would it be fair to say that while some of us went to summer camp, you went to... Well, some people went to summer camp. I hung out at, um, I hung out at craft service. <laughs> and if you could see Mike, you could see you'd that, be like, uh, "Yeah, he was at craft service." Yeah, lot. he he definitely uh, <laughs> he got down he got down on the grapevines. Yeah. He helped the boys unload the the sandwich truck. Yeah, di- directly into my mouth. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just teasing. You're just a a big ball of fun, Mike. Uh, I'm definitely there. a big something. Yeah. <laughs> so our first movie is the Batman. The Batman. But but thankfully, well, there okay. well, there was well, a, well, 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 that's that's well, kind of the joke, yeah, from, for the, that's the Bale Christian version. Bale version, right? And I'm happy to report, at least, I'm from my, yeah, that <laughs> oh, I'll be the hero this city deserves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he later died of throat cancer. <laughs> right exactly. now, I don't know where you're at on the the fandom gauge. Like, how big of a Batman fan would you say you are, Mike? I am a Michael Keaton lover, a Christian Bale enthusiast, but, you know, I mean, I really like the Christian Bale ones because I felt like they did a great job of keeping just enough fun, lightheartedness in there while still kind of going into the realm of the real. And then on the flip side to that is, 
I love, absolutely love the Michael Keaton films. Like, those are two of the greatest Batman pieces of media that have ever been created, in my opinion. Now, now, wait, wait, before you move on. So, they're the greatest, in terms of the best cinematic Batman presented, best Batman movie all around, best villains, or is it everything? I'll tell you the truth, like... I loved I loved Jack Nicholson as the Joker, right? I like Batman Returns the most. Like that's my favorite Batman movie. Of that's all the time. better film. I mean, I that, that movie. A lot it's of like, feel like it's like Empire Strikes Back. You know, like yeah. like I find like I cannot stay awake through A New Hope. I can't. But Empire right. Strikes Back, I'm all about. You know, it just. Right. But Batman Returns is so good. Like I feel like he was able to kick up the whimsy. Hmm while making it even more intense. You know what I mean? Like there there is some utter mastery in Batman Returns. Like to the point where we wanted my son to get into Batman and we didn't show him Batman. We showed him Batman Returns because that did he, the job. Oh yeah, he loved it. He loved yeah, it. Yeah. What 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 about the the Batman cheesy Adam West Burt Ward show did you yeah ever, as a I kid to- watch that totally when i was a little kid i loved that show and that that show really was great for kids because it was so you know they're not blowing up gotham or chopping fool's fingers off and you know I was like, we'll segue wait, wait wait how funny would it have been like a huge joke on the nation if like the 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 motherfuckers that lined up for like the Thursday night show, the real starts and it's the Adam West Batman. That movie was epic, dude. It straight had the Joker, the penguin, the shark Riddler, and spray. Catwoman, and <laughs> shark repellent spray and the bat boat. Dude, that movie was epic. I loved that movie when I was a kid. And here's a little bit of trivia folks. Mike, you probably, you probably know this, so maybe you don't. Originally the 89 Batman was going to be a comedy starring who? Do you know this? No. Bill Murray. What? With Eddie Murphy as no. fucking Robin. Yes. No. That was the original idea concept. But not the, through Tim Burton. No, 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 no. Okay. It, it, the concept changed, but I think the initial, because if you think about it, if you're not, if you weren't a comic book fan, when you thought of Batman in like the, the 80s, you probably thought of Adam West. Adam West. Sure. Right? That was the. The last great iconic representation. Well, th- think about it. John Peters, and not to not to put this on at his feet, but who the Who's, hell knows? I don't know he's, who that is. John Peters, producer. He's the guy. Oh, Kevin Smith famously talked about uh, with his Superman script how Peters wanted like a giant spider. Anyway. Oh right, right. Oh this guy, right, right, right. Yeah, the giant spider. Right. right he right, dated right. Barbara Streisand. He was a hairdresser and then became the wild, wild west guy. Yes, that guy. Yeah, I remember um, all of this, all this stuff. But he was, and then he, but that wasn't for the original Superman. That was for Superman Lives, right? The the Nick Cage one. Yeah, yeah. But he was he was producer, one of the producers on Batman. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. The '89 Batman, and right, I think right, right. The follow up. So I guess what I'm saying is I don't know if that horrible fucking idea started with him, but it it sounds like. Someone who doesn't really know Batman, the true Batman. Right. And that's a knee jerk. Oh, comedy. Well, sure. let's get Bill Murray and yeah, yeah, yeah. So thankfully they they Dumb. didn't go that route. Batman eighty nine, and I remember seeing it in the theater, and that lead up was probably the first time did they do a movies that made us for this one, Mike? They on the, they haven't done they movies should. that made us for Batman yet. Because no. that merchandising was <clears throat> fucking everywhere, dude. Hell yeah. I know I had a Batman shirt, Batman hat. I still have the Batmobile. I'm pretty sure I have it. Like my The original one it. like released in that like for that tie in? I think so. I think wow. I still have it. I mean it's probably not in great shape, but I'm pretty sure it's out in the uh out in my son's toy box. And old old Jack, he took a pay cut for a piece of the merchandising action. Smart guy. And, and and for some back end. And that paid off extremely well for that guy. So anyway. Um it's a it's a slow movie, very flawed, right? Um what, what do you mean slow? Batman. Movie? The original Batman eighty nine. Compared- slow movie very flawed? It it has a lot of flaws. It's not perfect. I mean Compa- it's not perfect, but I mean co- it's com- pretty fucking to, awesome. Compared no no, I'm not saying it's not great, but Returns was a much 
better pace. It, it felt like it had a clear vision, right? Sure. And, and for me, personally, I find this problem exists in a lot of Tim Burton films where the pacing feels off sometimes, right? R- Returns just has an energy to it. And when I say slow, I'm not saying I want like a battering flying at me every No, second. I know exactly what you mean. I there's know exactly a, what you mean. There's a kinetic... A conduit of energy that flows through that film. Batman 89, it was Tim Burton's first really huge, yeah. like massive scale movie. Yeah. And I think it shows. Like it, it, it was, there's a lack of polish and confidence in, in I'd agree. that movie. I definitely agree with that. Um, but it's, I still hold it in high regard. It still fucking blew my mind when I saw it and as a kid. And so that leads us to the bail years the nolan years right you, you yeah what do you think you you uh start this off what do you think about the nolan years well batman begins i feel like at the time i felt like okay this is probably the definitive batman movie because it gives you it's the first time to really get into the origins they did the league of shadows and they did it really it. well yeah and they treated it really seriously and i like like little things like his ears there's a purpose for everything and yep. his ears had like radio transmitters no or, or basically it enhances hearing right so it wasn't just for show it actually served a purpose right and then of course you get to the fucking dark knight batman in the dark knight was completely reactionary probably the weakest character in that movie for me and i don't say that as a the movie could have done this better it was so great right that even with that realization that Batman himself was probably the least interesting. It almost feels like, and then once you see the trilogy, when you see The Dark Knight Rises, it was really just an immense setup for Rises to a degree. Because then Rises, it becomes more Batman focused. Right. He becomes more the centerpiece. Whereas the Joker and, you know, Heath Ledger's legendary performance. Like, right. I don't have to say too much. Everyone knows. Everyone that knows. Yeah. He fucking was amazing. Yep. And it's still, for me to this day, the best Batman villain, best Joker, even with Joaquin Phoenix, which was yep. a different type of Joker, right? And it was a completely different. I don't yeah, even, right. I don't even, when I think about Batman films, Batman villains, I don't even think about Joaquin Phoenix's Joker because yeah. there, there was no Batman. You know what I mean? Right. I'll, I'll take Dark Knight Rises, though. So for Dark Knight Rises, I I think I'm in the minority with most people. I love that movie. I actually really love the stakes in Dark Knight Rises. I felt that Bane was actually a... I thought he was a really cool villain until he wasn't. You know what I mean? Like, until all of a sudden you find out... That's my only problem with that movie. Yeah, exactly. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yes. I, yeah. I love Dark Knight Rises. Oh, I don't know why I thought you didn't like it. Or no, not no, that no. not that you didn't like it, but you were like you were, you know, it was it was fine. You know what I mean? That sort of opinion on it. But dude, I love Dark Knight Rises. I just think it's and and you know, the catwoman in it was so cool because I mean she was just enough catwoman to be awesome, but not so over the top, like with the, the Michelle Pfeiffer one where it was like Cartoon-y supernatural or, cartoony yeah, which yeah, i yeah. fucking loved for the for the the eight for dark uh batman returns because it, it fit, fit that, that the world right that movie, like it, it fit, fit the tone world. of that movie where uh and anne hathaway i just love in everything i see like i just absolutely love her and i thought she was absolutely phenomenal and that girl just s- needs to eat, she needs to eat a sandwich dude she is so friggin' skinny. Well, yeah. Uh, she's skinny? What about Zoe Kravitz? That chick needs to eat a goddamn sandwich. Oh, no. Anne Hathaway looks gaunt. Like what? her. Yes. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh, my God. Compared to Zoe Kravitz? Or are you saying Zoe's skinnier? Just, I think they're both, they're both just as skinny. Like, like in my opinion, I mean, they're they, both they skinny as shit. Both weigh the same. It's just Anne Hathaway. Because was she in this princess movie back in the day? Like when she first princess started Diaries, out, yeah. she had some meat on her bones. And then she. Did she? Yeah. I mean, she wasn't a big fat ass, but she had normal, <laughs> you know, healthy weight. Right. And then I think she did Crime and Punishment or was it Crime and Punishment or I whatever the. You're not talking Les Mis, are you? Le, Les Mis. And Les she Mis. Lost a, she lost that... a ton of weight for that. I thought that was after Dark Knight. 
I think that was before. Okay. Oh, maybe it was. I don't know. Either way, I thought she was a pretty good but she woman. And then go into Bane, and then just the stakes were so high, and everything got... I, I don't know. I love Dark Knight Rises. I really do. And that opening scene with the plane shot, and every, that shit was badass. Like, how can you... Like, that scene was awesome, in my opinion. But again, but, my, my only problem with that film, and you mentioned it, is the, the switch. The switcheroo. Yeah. When Bane is really just some lovesick puppy or whatever the fuck. Yeah. And the the true villain is Ra's al Ghul's daughter. After Tom Hardy has been bodying dudes and devouring this city. Yeah. You know, and it's, he's just such a cool villain. And then to neuter him like that. Like, can you imagine Ledger in The Dark Knight Rises? And then it turns out he's actually not the mastermind. It's some oh god, some doughy eyed love interest of Bruce dude. Wayne. Fuck. Like, give me a fucking break, dude. Come on. <laughs> uh, you notice we didn't even talk about the two awful Batman movies. Like, we just went Keaton to Christian Bale and completely skipped the other two. Like, without even thinking about it, it was just a natural reaction to, like, go from those two to the Christian Bale ones, because we just want to forget they ever they ever happened. I'll tell you right now, Batman and Robin is one of the worst fucking movies I've ever <sighs> scorched my eyeballs with, but Dude. I really enjoy, to this day, Batman Forever. Really? Which one was that? That was one with a uh, super campy one with Jim Carrey, Tommy oh. Lee Jones. It's so doggone unashamed of what it is, right? Was that George Clooney or was that was that Val Kilmer? That was Val Kilmer. Okay. They just and, blend um, together, Joel man. Schumacher uh, directed did, it. He did both of them, though, right? He did, yeah. He was the nipple man. He put that. The nipple man. <laughs> and put nipples on the bat suit. Rest his soul, he is left this mortal coil but i think some interview he apologized for batman and robin even he well i just think it's it. funny there's there's nipples on the the batman suit but there's no nipples on the bat girl suit did you notice that <laughs> that was too much they can't put nipples on the bat girl suit well, he, he probably didn't you know he he he, likes, you know, he doesn't want to see the nipple he, yeah he, he likes the see fellas the yeah so, exactly uh, <laughs> he, doesn't want to, he doesn't really care about the nipples on the back girl right side. like he, he paid <laughs> extra close attention to those the the butt crack the, oh, the you shit. know the, the shaping didn't, the molding didn't they do like of, like when they're doing a shot of him like putting on the suit there's a shot of like his butt like spinning into frame yeah, or something they totally, totally yep is. yep <laughs> but uh, I, will, I will defend that movie not against any of the the movies we just discussed. For what it what it set out to do, it did it extremely well. It was a crowd pleasing. It's for those people that grew up with the Adam West and they didn't want like the really dreary, you yeah. know, somber feel. So it was good to get that out. And then it he lost his mind on Batman and Robin. I love Batman and Robin. I, I'm not Batman and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, Batman go ahead. Returns. Freudian I slip. Love, yeah, no, I, yeah, right. I love Batman Returns, and you who know, did, I mean, who, did the, freaking... who did the better job between Bale and uh, Keaton? Keaton. Okay. I mean, look. Was you it the can voice? Cast, well, not look. You, you did... can cast. You can cast. It's it's kind of easy to cast Batman, in my opinion. He's you're putting him in a suit, right? Mm -hmm. You got to cast Bruce Wayne. You know, Bruce Wayne is the truly hard thing to cast. And now, catch this is right, interesting because this, I, I got to put a pin in that because for the Batman. We'll talk about that. That is also another thing that I, yeah. I, I'm going to bring up. Um, but I thought Michael Keaton was great as Bruce Wayne yeah. because of his type of eccentricity that mm -hmm. he had going on. Um, I, I also really liked. The Christian Bale Bruce Wayne, because that Bruce Wayne made tons of sense as like a a distraction, like like you know what I mean. Uh, to make people, there's no way this this rich playboy douchebag right is a yacht Bruce full Wayne. Of what Swedish the fuck? No supermodels. way. No yeah. way. This guy is doing that, right? He's the perfect alter ego to Batman. He's the opposite of Batman. Mm -hmm. Just like Clark Kent is the perfect, uh, you know, alter ego for Superman because he's the opposite of Superman. Right. You know what I mean? But 
Michael Keaton did it with such different sorts of nuance and such different sorts of eccentric. He was more an eccentric, rich, weird dude as opposed to just a billionaire playboy who's just a douchebag. I think we need to get into the Batman. Yeah, let's get into let's get into the Batman. Mike. Okay. What did you think of it? What was your initial gut reaction to the Batman? Well, Mike, can I do the rest of the review in this voice? Would that be annoying as hell? Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> it feels kind of good, though. It's like massages the vocal cords. Uh, yeah, but yeah. it does not massage the ear yeah, drums. Maybe I'm no, um, okay. You. Spoilers. 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 This is, um, uh, yes, if do not, this is not a review on whether or not you should watch the movie. Okay. You yes. should, you, you should have already seen this movie before listening to this. Otherwise, you will be very sad when going in to watch it. And, and real quick, uh, and Mike and I, we, we share the same view on this. I, I think even, it's maybe even more extreme. I may be more extreme with this than Mike. Like I'll I'll purposely try not to watch any trailers but like the first one. Unless yeah. it like slips by and I just happen to see it. If you have any desire to see this film, do not listen to this. Okay? Yeah. Do yeah. not do yourself a service. Watch the film. Come back. We'll still be here. Yep. On pause. Yep. Frozen. Ready for you. In this ready moment in time. For you. Ready to tell you our thoughts. And feel free to comment, you know, um, wherever you download this or listen to this in the comments, we would love to hear your thoughts too. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is probably the best Batman movie. This, this movie was the first time I felt like finally he felt like the world's greatest detective, which is, which is the old school moniker, right? Sure. It was less about how many dudes you could throw at him so he can punch into oblivion. It was more working a crime scene, working the angles, the witnesses, trying to figure stuff out with James Gordon. You're right. I mean... I hoped it would be that because the tone was seven meets Saw meets oh, Batman, right? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And this, and this goes... It's, so I don't forget, and Mike could chime in, do not take your child. No. Do not take anyone with a short attention span. The movie is fucking three hours long now. And it feels like three hours. Well, see, <laughs> I had, well, this is going to be good because I had a completely different reaction. I, I took my 15-year-old. We were both super psyched. And he was like, Dad, it, it was long, but it didn't feel that long. Like, oh. I could have watched another hour. Oof, I'm like, no. Yeah, Okay. I, I probably couldn't have because I was really hungry. <laughs> I ate the M and M's like before the you know the the opening credits rolled. So um, now, now I didn't say Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. Bruce is, Wayne was was Bruce Wayne in this movie. He is almost was, was he completely <laughs> absent in this movie. But that was one of the and, things I didn't like about it. And you're not the only one. Like after I saw the movie, because I, I haven't read any reviews. I want to go in clean. Sure. And not be influenced. Okay, this is my impression. One of the main criticisms is that there's no Bruce Wayne to contrast with Batman. Personally, I, I, I can see that complaint, but I'm totally fine with it not doing that because I feel like that would have been expected. Like, the real challenge is to get this guy who's in a cowl for 90% of the movie. And maybe maybe they fail for you. So once we get into your 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 opinion, to get you to, to care or root for this guy, right? Even if you hated the whole movie, the opening was the most perfect depiction of what Batman is truly about. The whole montage, and it felt very Rorschach, Watchmen, because it has yeah. a little bit of narration. It it to was. Get, to it get in, was Rorschach. Yeah, like, to get it into was, his mind. Dude, it, that was one of my things. Was I was like, this is literally the Watchmen. Yeah, but the what? But Rorschach was a reaction. It was Alan Moore's. If Batman was real, this is right. what he would be like. So, in fairness, Rorschach that makes was, sense. Was stealing from the sure, best. sure, sure. But the whole, I can't be everywhere. Right. right, and that wasn't that was a pretty nice little touch. I and liked. there was a moment where the, the, the back signal went up, and you know it was a montage: the criminals across the city, 
Gotham City is a fucking graffiti covered <sighs> steamy fucking... shithole, right? It is <laughs> totally. I think it even made uh, uh, Joaquin's Phoenix Joker City look even worse, <laughs> or, or yeah. very, yeah. or, or almost a carbon better. copy, and that was a, sh- a shithole too, right? Yeah. So, yeah. and people are committing crimes, and then everyone's like looking up at that signal. You know, for some they think it's you know it's calling, but it's a warning, right? Yeah. I can't be everywhere, but I am the shadows. And it was like people looking, anticipating Batman coming out the shadows, and he, he didn't. Right? There was yeah. one guy spraying a can like of you know graffiti, and it rolls to the shadows. And you, as an audience, kind of don't know either, right? Yeah. Like you're like, is he gonna come out of there? That was that and was, then that was a found, nice bit of filmmaking. I that was, yeah, man, you feet. Yeah, I think it nailed that part of Batman that Nolan, he had a lot of that. He had a good start with uh, Batman Begins, establishing the fear, but that kind of went away. But it's such a integral part of Batman that it felt good to see that narrative throughout this whole thing, the fear thing. Like it never went away, really. And that, and again, that opening really teed it up really well. So Robert Pattinson's Bruce Wayne, he's in the movie for maybe he's a basically of scenes. well, he's basically Batman on his day off. Right. Like he's, he's not Bruce Wayne. He's just Batman on his day off. I don't, I'm not going to go through and explain scene by scene everything, but basically. Uh, you can see from the trailers, the Riddler is the main bad guy. Think of if you ever seen Seven oh. or saw one of those movies, he's killing high level uh, political figures, right? And yep. leaving little cookie trails for for Batman. It's classic Riddler, you know. You know he didn't say riddle me this, but he had like these. He could have clues. Right? <laughs> he might as well have. And it leads up to some shocking revelations about Thomas Wayne and his involvement with Falcone. And One of the few things I liked about the movie, actually, yeah. was the fact that Thomas Wayne wasn't a Boy Scout. You know right. what I mean? Like, right. I actually really liked that. And Catwoman's in it. Zoe Kravitz looking amazing. And she, I think I, I really enjoyed her depiction of Catwoman. I, I, I don't she- know, man. I, I felt like... You know what annoyed me? I was I told and I told my wife about this. I was like, I don't feel like I feel like Catwoman should be sexier as Catwoman than as Selena Kyle, and I thought she was way sexier as Selena Kyle than she was as Catwoman. Does that make sense? Are you are you thinking of more of the Michelle Pfeiffer version or even even Anne Hathaway's version? You know what I mean? Like when she's Catwoman, I find her sexier, right? But mm-hmm. when she when Zoe Kravitz was was Selena Kyle, I thought I thought she was sexier as Selena Kyle than I did as as Catwoman. You like those hot pink wigs, right? I liked everything about Selena Kyle. Yeah, <laughs> Every, everything about Zoe Kravitz and Selena Kyle, I I I, I enjoyed. Yeah, I felt, uh, but I felt like, and then that. Man, <laughs> she did. She did have a lousy. Give, cat give, woman I mask, mean, though. give her a mask. Give her something, man. Yeah. That just like. I get homegrown, but it looks like someone's dress sock. Like someone cut yeah. a hole in a sock and just put yeah. it on their head. Revelations are are made basically for the last what twenty years. The real mayor of Gotham is Falcone. And basically, he had Thomas Wayne over a barrel because he actually saved Falcone's life. Right. And this is this is told through exposition or whatever because Thomas Wayne's a surgeon and he's a good man, so he saved his life. Well, that's well. I think from the revelations you learn later, they were probably already connected. And I thought this piece was interesting, and I don't know if this is part of Batman lore. And I'm I'm by no means. A Batman expert, right? But Martha Wayne had a secret past. Martha Arkham. I didn't know that. Yeah. Was that her last name? So she was Arkham? She is an Arkham. That's the whole thing. The whole idea is the Waynes and the Arkhams are the... Oh, I thought it was a whole separate fan. I I totally... No, dude. That was the whole thing. The, The Martha, it was like, you know, she married Bruce Wayne, became Martha Wayne, but she was Martha Arkham, like, Mm. initially... But I like that idea that she had mental mental uh, health issues, right? Which and maybe maybe I'm reaching, but immediately I thought, oh, that's why he's running around as a bat. Like uh. <laughs> that, there, there's some psychosis going on here, right? That may yeah. be genetic because it's not. 
And that's oh, the whole thing. With, I didn't even think about that, but that makes sense. But that's the whole thing with Batman, like, and what Joker and other villains, but mainly Joker is like, you're fucking, you're just like us, dude. Yeah. You think this is normal what you're doing? Right. And jo- I think Joker's whole purpose is to push him over the edge to prove himself right. Right. Like, because he knows that he can be pushed over yeah. the edge because he's damn near close to he's it. He's one you know bad I mean? day away to becoming the villain. Right. Exactly. So I thought that was a nice, interesting angle. So anyway, her past was going to be revealed by this reporter. And in a moment of panic, Thomas Wayne, because he was running for mayor, I believe at the time, enlisted Falcone to put pressure on this guy not to publish his story. And Falcone killed him. So then he had leverage over Thomas, right? But soon after that, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but that's when Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne were murdered. That week, Thomas Wayne didn't feel comfortable about the fact that Falcone killed him and felt really bad and was going to go to the ho- go to the cops and confess everything and the moment he confessed later that night is when he was murdered He's, they still don't know which i like i like that yeah didn't, yeah he definitely did it because it's ambiguous and it's like a never-ending resolution for bruce yeah. wayne like which, which is which is nice which is great motivation the for exact opposite i will say of 89 batman like Jack Napier killed, and they're absolutely clear that the Joker killed his parents and he gets his revenge, right? right? Whereas this is, he doesn't know if it was Falcone, if it was the other crime guy. Who was the other crime? I don't remember. Uh, Fa- Falcone. Uh, oh, the Penguin. No, but there was another one. They were talking about the crime boss who was who was big back in the day. Uh, Corleone. <laughs> um anyways it was it was another crime boss right and and they say they don't know if it was it, who it was or it was or if it was just some guy off the street some crazy guy on the street and so they leave it open which i thought was cool so in the middle of this movie bruce wayne threw little clues left by the riddler discovers all this information it kind right. of rocks his world Before I go any further, I can't believe I have not yet mentioned Colin Farrell as... In a fat suit. But I'm going to say, dude, I don't know where you stand, but that was an amazing piece of makeup. Usually those fat suits, it's like the Nutty Professor. You could tell there's a little scene where the real chin is at, right? And when an actor like folds their neck, you kind of see it. I just don't understand and... why they put Colin Farrell in a fat suit. Why, there just wasn't another actor who a, could a real do fat, it. A fat, yeah. Guy. Like it just seems weird to me. Is there any controversy around that? Like, are there like a, a bunch of fat dudes? Because with Peter yeah. Dinklage, you know, recently, the whole the Snow White, White and the Seven Dwarfs, and there's a little war going on between actors of that stature. Like, hey, man. What the fuck, man? You're taking away, taking bread off my table, dude. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. right. I want to be a fucking dwarf in a movie. <laughs> uh, is there a line of fat guys just like, come on, It just man. seemed weird. It, it seemed weird to me that they would, but he, I'm not going to lie, he was pretty good. He I was, mean, am- I would say amazing. I've never seen an actor in that much makeup where it didn't get in the way of like, because, you know, sometimes you even as well as it can be done, you're thinking that's really so and so in there, right? Yeah. Oh uh, well, well, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you this: like, I thought to myself, you know, going into it, like, this is some, you know, Colin Farrell in a fat suit. And I'll tell you the truth: I, I, if I was more into the movie at any given moment, I probably wouldn't have. I, I probably would have got lost and and not even thought about it. But because I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really dig it that much. I wasn't into it to the point where I just forgot about it. You know what I mean? Right. But right. it was so good to where it didn't bother me, even though I wasn't that into the movie. So that tells me that it was it was pretty damn good. And right. Colin Farrell is just I fucking love that guy and everything I see him in. Like everything he's in, he is value added to any movie he is in, in my opinion. So the the Riddler uh, is captured, and there's a great scene when when he calls for Batman, and Bruce Wayne as Batman is like, "Fuck, this is it." Because see, basically the last victim on his list of victims was Bruce Wayne, and by mistake he blew up Alfred instead. Right. Um, Alfred survived, just badly like injured. 
and he thinks the jig is up. So he goes to see Riddler. And the way they crafted that scene, you think he does know. He does know, know yeah. that he's Bruce Wayne. He says his name. But not just that. They led up to it with a whole shots of him standing in the Riddler's lair and looking at all this stuff on his wall and says, like, I know who you really are. And, like, who is Batman? Like, you know, news right, clippings right. and shit. And then it cuts directly to him in there talking to him. He thinks that he knows that he's Bruce Wayne. And then it turns out he doesn't know. But clearly the Riddler's insane and he reveals that he's an orphan. And I think it's yep. more implied than said that he is the son of the reporter that was going to rat out Martha Wayne. Oh, you you got that? So I, I kind of got that. They didn't say it. I huh. thought for sure he was going to reveal it, especially when he said Bruce Wayne. I could be wrong. But it, it certainly felt like I didn't even get that. There was an implication yeah. there. Patterson channels some Christian Bale. Where, what is the plan? Yeah, what, he right, pounded right, the window. Right. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, somewhere Christian Bale's watching that going, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> don't be don't be biting on my shit, man. No, no, he's thinking, no, he's thinking to himself, he's like, is that what I sounded like, really? <laughs> Basically, the first tool that he kills the first victim with was some kind of bladed weapon for pulling rugs up. He goes back to the Riddler's hideout and puts it together. He pulls up the rug and it's like a map of Gotham with all these points where I guess the port points. He's going to detonate and basically flood Gotham, drown the yeah. rats. Because there's a theme of rats throughout right. um, the Riddler's uh, riddles. And it leads to a big finale where the newly elected mayor and the citizens of Gotham are basically corralled in this middle where there's a bunch of incel asshole snipers. <laughs> incel <laughs> asshole they, they don't say incel, but come on. These are the dudes that pick Shit. up guns and want to like. Yeah. Bunch of maggots. <laughs> yeah. And they're, they're up in the catwalk and they're just going to kill everyone. Just yeah, shoot totally. everyone. And, Batman comes in. I thought it was really funny when he breaks in there and like doesn't just break one little pane of glass so he can fall in. Like breaks all the glass. So it's like it's like hey all hey all you all you you know civilians down there. Fuck you. Here comes a bunch of glass. Oh, you better God. cover your eyes. <laughs> like, I thought that was kind of funny. The fights were weren't clean. Like he he got his ass kicked as much Dude. as he kicked ass. But I, I don't think we've ever gotten a scene like this in a Batman movie, at least not this effective, of Batman saving civilians. Like, you know, he takes out all, all the bad guys. People are trapped under rubble. And he's helping people out. And there's this great shot with him with the flare, overhead shot, and he's leading people through the water. And Bruce Wayne, through narration, is realizing, oh, and I forgot, this is a crucial point. One of the guys on the catwalk, he takes him down. They take the mask off and it's like, who are you? Like, and he's like, I'm vengeance, which is what Batman has said from the beginning of the movie. So he has inadvertently inspired the Riddler and all these other wahoos to twist what his true intentions are to warp it into their own like misguided view of what justice yeah. and and for me, it felt like, yeah, fucking kick their ass, Batman, like in the in the beginning. And we sure. all saw the trails. Like, I'm vengeance. And we're like, yeah. But then at the end, what does that really gain? Right? Like, right. he's got to be more than that. This is like his second year as Batman. This is a Bruce Wayne still learning how to, not just to be a, a savior to the city, how to do it, what's meaningful. But also, he's a recluse. He's like a Howard Hughes kind of guy, right? He's He barely comes out, and he's just 24-7. This is what it's about. and My wife thought the same thing. She actually brought that up she, when I was talking about the fact that Bruce Wayne is nowhere to be found. And like Bruce Wayne in this movie, when you do see him, is basically just, you know. He looks like shit. Look at, yeah, and you look at that Bruce Wayne and you could be like, yeah, he looks angry enough to be uh, to be Batman. You right. know what I mean? Like, And and my wife said, said that, well, maybe he's like, he hasn't gotten to that point where he understands that he needs to be a separate person as Bruce Wayne than he is as Batman. And and we'll see if there's a second movie, if this right. is the direction they're going to go. But but I feel like part of that realization at the end 
it's not just enough to be Batman. He probably he needs to be Bruce Wayne too. The city needs both of them. You need someone right. at the levers of power. You need someone in the room, right? Where yeah. the conversation's happening as much as you need someone on the rooftop kicking some ass and you know listening at walls, right? And the fact that we've gotten that Bruce Wayne contrast before in other movies, I was okay that I didn't get it here. Like hmm. I appreciate the movie trying to do something different, give us a different take on Batman or or a different aspect. It really felt like a direct interpretation and it pulled from many Batman sources like the Long Halloween and Batman Year One and but it felt like if you were re- read a Batman comic, I'm sh- yeah, Bruce Wayne's in it, but mainly it's Batman. And it's really right. about working the case and the crime. That's true. And in general, if you haven't guessed it yet, I love this movie. I thought it was great. Like I even I'm, I I texted my my family, my sister and my brother in law and my nieces and nephews. Like this movie's good, but only if you go in knowing that it's more of a seven saw crime noir thriller that just happens to star Batman, and it's three hours long. If you hear all that and think I'm in, you'll be fine. Yeah. If if you want wham bam action hooks flying all over the place, you know, missiles flying, you're not going to get that. But that's enough of me. Tell us how you hated it, Mike. I didn't hate it, man. And, and, like, and, no, no, it's, it's, <laughs> and it's okay. It's a safe space. I, I know, I know, I know. And if I hated it, I would say that I hated it, but I didn't. I had some serious issues with it. It felt like three hours to me. I did not want to see any more. I felt like once they solved the whole Falcone thing, I was like, okay, well, let's go into the next half hour that solves the Riddler part. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm like, okay, back to the whole, you know, it felt like, you know how in, um, in the dark night, basically the movie ends and then you got to deal with the, with two face, right. For another half hour, like that literally had nothing to do with anything. Like it was just kind of tacked on. I kind of felt like, and they just threw scenes here and there in the movie to where that didn't, come out of left field right um this was kind of the opposite i didn't care i don't give a shit about falcone like i want to know what's going on with the riddler like you got to make me sit through that false ending to get to the riddler like i i mean it makes sense to do it that way because people aren't like people are like still looking forward to hear about what's happening with the riddler you know what i mean but i don't know man i was but there was but, just, but that was part of the Riddler's, like bringing yeah. Falcone to the light was his whole way, and he hadn't been caught at that point. It just he felt was still fucking. It just felt like clunky, like. And then, oh my god! So would you? Let me ask you this: Would you say that the relationship between Batman and Catwoman, between Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle, is an important relationship between the two? important to the plot of the, of the movie important period like over overarching through all the different shows through all the different movies do you believe that those two characters being infatuated with each other and having chemistry is somewhat important to to batman yeah to the, yeah the, well yeah. yeah he's she is the love interest she's the only one that penetrated i don't understand how two so, two beautiful people like Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz can have such little chemistry. Like it was just every time, like dude, when they have when they kiss, when they're like up on, in by the bat signal, I was just like, oh god, oh, this I, I is could, and I could tell you why. So awful, even it's even so bad. Even though I didn't, I I didn't feel this way, but I think what you needed and justifiably so i could see this what what makes that relationship spicy is that selena kyle and bruce wayne versus selena kyle's Catwoman and bruce wayne you've only you only see half of the relationship right well the thing is from the moment they met they were they were allies that was my problem they spent like 30 seconds of him like them fighting, and then they were allies. Well, I mean, but they, almost immediately, they had they had a well. Her interest was in 
finding out what happened to her friend for whatever reason but it but, but that's, that's not the, re- the important but that's the reason yeah, i understand that but for whatever reason he that doesn't matter what get what matters bar. yeah but what matters is the fact that they work together immediately in the nolan ones she betrays him she you know he she steals from him there's all this this but, but tension you- in their relationship hang on and then in the michael keaton one like she is a literal supervillain that he, as as Bruce Wayne, has fallen in love with, and as Batman is is fighting against, and then they realize who they are, and it's like this this utter mind shattering, heartbreaking realization that these two people who love each other and are perfect for each other can't be together. You know what I mean, like. I, I don't know, and and this just felt like, oh, it was so. So I just you felt wanted like it was, you wanted that story again. I wanted no. I wanted something, some tension. I wanted some kind of tension, which is why I thought they did a good job in the Nolan one, not doing it exactly the same, right? But but putting it in, you know, doing it in a way mm-hmm. that was different, but still had that sort of tension where. They couldn't really trust each other, but they did have, and they had chemistry. Christian Bale and Anne Hathaway had chemistry. When they were on st- on screen together, you could feel the electricity between them. When Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz were on screen, I was just like, can we get on to the next scene I, I, I did not feel that way at all. But like, again, when she's like, when you find out that, Falcone is my father. I'm like, of course he fucking is. Of course he's your fucking father. What else? Who else would he be? Right? Would I call it like a the best depiction of a Catwoman Batman romance? No, because what you need for that, you need Bruce Wayne, right? And you need that duality and that I'm hiding this dark secret. Almost all those movies, Bruce Wayne meets selena kyle as bruce wayne right like right. they have moments together as real people without their suits on which is because what when, when they have their suits on they're working yes <laughs> right like exactly there's no time for that so it probably is a cop out i don't know if they have a sequel to this one because the, the natural extension of this would be pattinson's batman realizing he needs to have a bruce wayne persona right. or a life and through that he allows some kind of relationship, some romance, something to penetrate. But 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 this we're talking about this movie. We can't we can't like judge yeah, it by ex- shit yeah, that exactly. doesn't exist. So And I will say I found it very funny that you brought up the whole f- him walking through the water with the flare scene as like a good scene. I thought it was so contrived. It felt so bad to me. I, I literally, when he was walking with Dude, all the people, your cornflakes this morning. with all that's so funny. I actually had cornflakes this morning, <laughs> <laughs> and so literally, I was just like, "Look!" Uh, uh, when he was walking through the water with the with the with the flare, and all the people are behind him, I was like, "Oh God." I was like, just please don't let them form the bat symbol. That's all I ask is like. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that did pop in my mind. Like, wait, are they going to make the, the bat? Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what I thought. I was like, please don't do that. See, I I, I think by that time, and I don't know. You, you, I'm, not, I'm not in your head. Near that point, that's near the end of the movie. You just wanted to be fucking over. Like, yeah. come on, man. At, at, at not saying that it's not it wasn't contrived. It, I'm sure a lot of people agree with you. I I felt like, oh, this is nice. This is basically Gotham accepting him as a savior of some kind. Because throughout the whole movie, everyone's seeing him as a freak, pariah. Right. No one I mean, he's he's still young in his career. And this is the first time that he's actually it may be the first time he's actually helped someone. Then I think about it, because He's all about kicking the shit out of criminals. Right. But has he actually helped a citizen? Like, has he, like, made himself visible visible enough to help someone with something that's not as sexy as an Uzi fight on a rooftop or whatever, right? Like, this is him rescuing people from rubble. I will say the moment, from the moment it started, and it starts with 
the monologue, right? That's like it starts with him monologuing Which usually I over hate in movies. The the voiceover and I did hate it. I was yeah. like and no, I didn't even hate it so much as I was just like I guess earlier Okay, so earlier that day I was looking at Facebook and I saw a meme that was that was um Dr. Manhattan sitting on Mars, right? Mm-hmm. The little voice blurb says it's 1989. I'm eight years old. I'm watching a darker, more serious Batman movie. <laughs> right. It's 2006, whatever the year, 2008, whatever the year it was. It's like, I'm, I'm 24, I'm 22 years old. I'm watching a darker, more realistic Batman movie. It's 2022. Mm-hmm. I'm 43 years old. I'm watching a darker, more realistic Batman movie. And I don't know if that kind of put the whole Watchmen idea in my head. Mm-hmm. But the moment he started monologuing, I was just like, dude, this is like, this is Rorschach. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't want Batman to be Rorschach, I guess. But you say that. The whole idea was that Rorschach is like a Batman, what Batman would be like in real life. Okay, I I, I get that. But I guess I never knew that piece of trivia. Well, I mean... So I was just kind of like on the the level of, I don't want this to be the Watchmen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want it... I don't want that to actually be... Well, if you you think of some noir detective films... From back and that's, in the day, yeah, but that's what I was going to say. Is it felt like that? Drives that, and that's, and that's what it felt like. Right. I will say, you go into this movie. I think you said it earlier, and I think it's very, very true. Go into this movie wanting a who done it detective, dark Saw Seven esque film with Batman in it. This is what that movie is. Like Riddler literally cuts a guy's thumb off to hang from a thumb drive. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right what'd you think of uh jeffrey wright as gordon what did he was talk great about him? yeah he was, he was good yeah he was I, I liked him i like jeffrey wright and everything yeah. though i mean i don't think i've ever seen jeffrey wright in something i mean you know him and colin farrell are definitely i'm always happy to see them on screen always so let, let's let's talk about patterson as batman I thought he was a pretty damn good Batman, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. He was not the problem. Uh, It was the fact that you only see Bruce Wayne, like, three times, I think, maybe. You see him, like, or maybe four times. You see him once out in the world at the, at the, the funeral, and then, you know, twice in the Batcave and once when he's talking to Andy Serkis in the, when he, as Alfred, in the, in the, hospital um i just i don't know i feel like you kind of maybe it's because i'm i'm so accustomed to that because they really really showed a lot of bruce wayne in the in the uh the nolan films right they showed a lot of it in in the 89 ones too but they really showed a lot of it in the the Nolan ones because they had to introduce him. They had to create Batman in those movies. Um, and maybe that's why I, but see, I really want but, but, but you're right. Like in a comic book, you don't really see them as their alter ego that much. You see them as, as the superhero. And, and also dude, the fact that he is again, what I really like about this movie is that he's a detective. Yeah. And his detective gear is Batman. Yeah, and he's working the case. When he's working the case, he's Batman. He's not Bruce Wayne. Sure, they don't fucking let Bruce Wayne onto a crime scene. They barely wanted Batman to walk onto it. So, well, do you want? Uh, would you like to see a sequel? To this? sure, why not? Why not? So you if, know, you see the potential, but there's some things. If I they do. would just check some boxes, I really liked Gotham though. I liked yeah. Gotham being a writhing cesspool of filth and, you know, mm-hmm. you know, crap in the gutter. Like, it just seemed like it seemed like a great place to have Batman. But at the same time, because um, Gotham's a character, it's a character, right? Like yeah, it's... I really want them. I really, really want them to link Joaquin Phoenix's Joker and this. 
I really want them to do that. Like it, 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 it seems like it's it's ripe for the picking to to get them. But I will say that fight scene was was I like that fight scene a lot because it was actually a Batman fight scene the as scaffold opposed to just up, up, yeah. I mean, yeah. just like you know, I mean, the fight scene at the beginning it was bad. You know, it was pretty dope, right? Like because he's just beating on these guys. But the the scaffold, like the the scene at the end, like the fight scene at the end. I mean, it's a Batman fight scene. You know, it's it's not just some dude punching people. You know, there, there's a scene where he's fighting dudes in the hallway. It looks really cool. It's illuminated with the gunshots. And, right, but more they had like Uzis. They had like automatic assault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his fucking jaw is exposed, dude. Like, right. And I I know this is a. This is probably a stupid nitpick. This is like, hey, how come they don't know There's Clark a- Kent is Superman? Like, right. it probably falls into that. But the problem with going super realistic is that you start thinking realistically about situations. And right. if Bruce Wayne has prepared, almost wish that they had him had some kind of chin cover. And it could have looked badass, like when he's really going fully armored. No one's fucking hitting him in the chin. Like, none of these yeah. assholes think... Hey, yeah, let's brrr, like you like, know what I there's mean. There's a like, big fleshy target right there. Let's just blow his brains out. I'm shooting his... his ass in the face. <laughs> like, you know what I mean, like, uh. I'm sorry, that bugged me, man. Like that, that bugged the that shit did, out of me. That did kind of bug me too. I'm like, there's no way. Like, at least one of these bullets goes directly through, or there's a ricochet or some shit. Dumbass, shoot him, shoot him in the fucking chin, man. Shoot him in the mouth, and then you see him go, and there's like a little cover. That shoots yeah. down and his eyes illuminate so you can see in the dark. And then you have this fucking completely encased bat from hell with the red laser. Like, it could have been. It. And you don't have to do it all the time. I get it. Like, right. Like, just give me that one moment of like, oh, okay. So he is prepared. Like, he's thought about that. One thing I thought that was kind of cool was when he gets shot in the chest with that shotgun. He's like, oh, you're like, oh, that fucking hurt, right? And he just laid the fuck out. Like, then he's, like, Selena Kyle's about to get thrown off this. The, the guy, guy's uh, got a knife. He's about to like, stab something's her. Something's about to yeah. happen. Selena Kyle's about to die, right? right. And he's like, fuck. He's like, Rawr. And so he... He digs in his in his you know pouch and he grabs a little vial of this green juice, right? This green stuff and stabs it in his leg. And he's like, Rah! he like jumps up. It's like some adrenaline boost mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. some shit, right? And he goes and beats the shit out of the guy, right? I was thinking to myself, well, that's kind of cool because. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but the fact that they made it green and not just like a vial of fluid, they could have picked a million different colors to make that, right? Mm-hmm. But it makes me think like you can lead that into a more comic accurate version of Bane. Yes. Where I, he, a- he, yeah. My did kid you think said that? that? Like before I could even get it out, Logan was like, after the movie, he's like, oh, do you think when he pulled that adrenaline out, you think that's going to lead to Bane? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you're right, man. I mean, who knows? But the fact that they put the Joker in it, I wouldn't dismiss it. So when they finally show the Joker at the end in his cell mm-hmm. in, in Arkham, uh, talking to the Riddler, he looked like not part of this world. In my opinion, looked a little whimsy. Like he looked a little too... Fan filmy. Fan fantastical. You know, not the Joker from The Batman. You know what I mean? From what they have just established over three hours of a film, you know, as very realistic, he looked very over the top. So one observation I had at the beginning, and then it was reinforced at the end, the gang that he beats the shit out of yep, had Joker, Joker makeup. Yep, Joker acolytes. Yeah. Right. He's uh, already fought the Joker. The Riddler is in Arkham. He has a cell right next to, conveniently, the Joker. And they have a conversation, and we you definitely know it's a Joker, because although you don't see his face, you see enough of it that you could tell it's got that. And his face is all scarred, and he's all weird looking, his hair's all... He's the Joker, I mean, yeah. Apparently, they filmed a scene with Pattinson coming in to talk to the Joker, because he wanted to understand the mentality the Riddler. of the Riddler. He was a psychopath that he's captured before. Bonus features. <laughs> and then he said, the director actually said that. He said, this will be a bonus feature. You can look this up on YouTube. According to him, the director, 
and co-writer. He's not the Joker yet. The origin of the Joker is this: there's this film from the 20s, The Man Who Laughed or Man Who Laughs. The Man Who Laughs, yeah. So, and it's about a guy who has a condition where he can't not smile. Look up the actor. That's the fucking Joker. And he was inspiration for Bill Finger and uh, Bob Kane. His Joker has that condition. He said, our Joker was born with a condition where he has this permanent fucking smile on his face. From a baby on, he screwed, (laughs) right? Because he's seen as a freak. And that is one of the causes of his psychosis. But he's not officially the Joker yet. Hmm. Interesting. Because I thought I thought it would be kind of cool, like you said, oh, the Joker's already been around, and these are like his little gang members still like doing his bitty or hanging around or whatever with the face paint, like or he's inspired some people. But I guess there's no connection because he's not the Joker. That's stupid. Why Then why do it that way? I don't know. This is what he said. Why is he putting that? It, it, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why would he not already have fought the Joker? Why would the Riddler be in Arkham next to this guy who's going to become the Joker? If he, who already looks like the Joker. Oh, yeah, scars like the Joker. I mean, it's just doesn't make any sense. Wait, what'd you, wait, wait, wait. What'd you think of the Batmobile? The Batmobile and the I mean, Bat Cycle? It, I mean, the, but the Bat Cycle? I mean, it was just a freaking motorcycle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Um, but the, the Batmobile was not much of a Batmobile per se, Mm -hmm. like style wise, but, um, that was a good chase. I thought when he chased the penguin, you know, I didn't think it was that great of a chase because the rain obscured a lot of what was going on. So I kind of felt like it was hidden. You know what I mean? Like, like the, there's a lot of good chase. Like, if you think of like a really good chase, and like I think it's like the Born Ultimatum or something. So like I kind that. of felt there's like it was hidden. In that you know what I right? mean? Like, and it's bright daylight, and you can see everything that's happening, which makes it that much more visceral. In my and opinion. it's bright like when you're hiding everything behind darkness and rain i'm just i i was like where am i going what is what are we going this way or i don't really know what's happening you think it was a bad editing or just it's the composition no it's the I, actual I, nature is it's at night it's in the, the na- rain. it's the nature of doing it at night in the rain i understand the idea you're trying yeah, to set yeah, a yeah, mood yeah. whatever but you're losing me in the actual directionality of how this race is you're going. losing i don't really see it going from point a to point b i see a bunch of dis disjointed sort of shots you know and so i don't know i just i i i like certain parts of it but for the most part i just thought it was oh and i was like oh oh that's convenient a uh no, i just a, I, I a car hauler I like certain truck parts ramp of it, drops down right in front part, of him so he can was, jump oh, right over like, the oh, exploding oh that's convenient the exploding a, uh, oil, gas a, tanker a, a car yeah, that, that's hauler or ramp, truck the ramp, ramp. And, drops, you know, a, i'll give you that 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 was very come on convenient. man when you're trying to be super realistic and that happens i'm just like give me a fucking break so what, you know what, what, I, I, what mean? I thought was going to happen even though i saw on the trailers he did some kind of a jump with that friggin' jet engine i thought it yeah. was going to hit the nitro the nitrous like in mad max and just power his way through the wreckage that's what i was hoping was i thought yeah. it was going to explode and like you know a second after the explosion happens he bursts through it yeah. like i don't know I, I was like oh so he jumps over it that's gonna be i mean honestly you know if I mean? you took that ramp scene out like the the moment of the convenient ramp. Yeah, that it, one shot. It would work. And you just, it, yeah, like, it, your it mind would connect would. the dots. Yeah, like, you would connect the dots. You you take out the ramp shot, the ramp j- dropping, and just show the boost on his, his afterburner and then show him exploding through the explosion. It's done. I was also thinking, I mean, they showed him, they, they showed him in the, in the, in the trailers. Right. Mm-hmm. But when they first show the Riddler in that mask, I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, Dude, it's like, it's the gimp from fucking... Oh, God. <laughs> like, from Pulp Fiction? What? From Pulp Fiction, <laughs> killing fools. Like, <laughs> he's like, he's finally fucking gotten enough of that shit, and he's going for it, you know? <laughs> God, just give Catwoman a good mask, please, for fuck's sake. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she had, like, she had this badass motorcycle suit... Jesus Christ, like, you just find any old beanie, like, on the ground, like, like rip a hole in it and throw it over your face. But this was really just Dr. J's 
old tube sock. <laughs> you can't think anyone sexy wears wearing, you know, their older brother's like stretched out fucking beanie that she cut eye holes in. Like that thing was fucking disgusting. Like literally, it was so bad. Like, what the hell were they thinking putting that on that girl's face? Like, dude, she must have she must have been like you want me to wear this? <laughs> okay, whatever. Let's do this. Maybe that's why there was no fucking chemistry between them. Because all Robert Pattinson would see was that fucking beanie on her goddamn head. He's like, why am I going to kiss this chick with the bag over her face? You know what I mean? Like, give me a break. So out of stars, five out of five. Let's do a... Eh. Two and a half. Woo! Brutal. Three, maybe. No, three, no, I'll no, give it no, three. No, I, I, I'll give it three. This for no, dude. Don't do that. Stay. Be a man. Stick with your two and a half. <laughs> I mean, look, I kind of. I, give I the kind score of feel... it deserves, not the score it needs. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how that line goes? Two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> there we go. I'll give it two and a half. <laughs> what do you give it? I'll give it four throat polyps. Out of five, four throw. <laughs> is that is that a thing? Uh, throw a not throw Isn't throw it? not four nodules for uh, <laughs> vocal nodules out of five. Yeah. Wait, I want to change my rating. I'll give it four Catwoman headbands out of five. <laughs> In Charlie's and the Chocolate Factory, there is nothing to compel me to want to watch it. Nothing. Why, why do they have to fucking explain the origins of everyone? Right? I don't like know, it, man. Why are we talking about? Well, we're just bald guys of bad movies. It's a bad fucking movie. So it's like, like maybe we should do Charlie and the Chocolate Factory one of these days. <laughs> <laughs>